wife said that we are going to be honoring you guys um, and uh, ladies uh, because and it's also our Thanksgiving so you know you guys can eat eat be merry happy and, and, and you know what we're gonna be uh, asking you guys to come forward the ones that are present uh, we got a little gift for you amen well let's turn in our Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and we're going to start on verse 1 through 4. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Hallelujah. I forgot to tell you, Merry Christmas. Hey, I can't wait for snow. <laughs> I know. And you know, another thing, I just, uh, before, everybody says, you know, state lost yesterday. And I got the state shirt on, so my bad. Sorry, Cody. Man, yeah, they were, oh, praise God. All right, verse four. It says, you, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is Christ Jesus. Verse two, in the things that you have heard from among many witnesses, commit these to faith, faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Verse three, you, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Verse 4, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of his life, that he may please him who enlists him as a soldier. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We humble ourselves before you, God, as we honor you first and honor our vets today, Lord, that God, that you will open up our hearts and our minds, Lord, that we will receive your word, Lord, and we will be blessed today. Lord, that we will have great fellowship together after the service. We thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So today is Veterans Day. I want to thank all the men and women that are here that served. Uh, it makes it uh, possible for our freedom. You know, without you guys going to war and, and, and sacrifices that you've made, we thank you. On, on behalf of this church, I thank you. I want to thank you personally. And I think we shouldn't just have to have a day to thank our men and women that was in the service. I think it should be every day, to be honest with you. Because they have sacrificed so much. And they're coming back to this, to this war here in America as well. They're warring with, with uh, spiritual principalities and the devil is attacking them more and more. But it's also for the grandparents, the parents, and everybody else that's involved it's not just the veterans, but when they come back or when they go overseas, they have to have help in some way. And sometimes the family members have to step up. Amen. And there's we either if it's prayer or whatever it is that asking God to put a hedge of protection around them. And it's vital for us to still lift up. Even if we don't agree with the war or whatever's going on, we still church have to lift them up. We still have to pray for them, even if they're not related to us. Because it's a shame when they see all the soldiers coming in on the flags draped over the coffin. You know, we have to remember and, and know that, you know, they have God first. Then it's, then it's the core. And then it's family. We have to understand that and we have to mourn with them. Even if we don't know them. Even if we don't agree with the war, what's going on. But we, you know, the Bible tells us there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. But we still have to lift these young men and women up and our veterans as well that paved, that paved the way for our freedom. So we have, we can come to church with our, you know, on the religion and everything going on. Amen. The image of a soldier is not new to our world. But the Old and New Testament alike refers to soldiers on numerous occasions. As Christians, we are soldiers. You think about it, just like the like uh, Second Timothy said, we are soldiers. We have our marching orders. We have our assignment, and our assignment is to spread the gospel. We are going through a spiritual warfare right now with the enemy, and most of you out there may not be uh, military vets or anything, but you, you're still going through a spiritual warfare because the enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy everything that you stand for. And, and today's message is soldier of the cross. Because once we've took that vow from our commander in chief is Jesus Christ, 
We took a vow against anything evil. Just like the vets today, they took a vow to protect their country. For God, under God, one nation under God. And they live that. They believe, and they even lost their lives for that. So we should understand one thing. It's not in vain, amen? We are soldiers of Christ. And whenever the Satan tries to come against you, we need to come back to him with the name of Jesus. And the blood, amen? Thank you for the, the blood, amen? There's going to be four points I want to touch to this morning. And I told everybody, I'll be honest with you, I'll try to make it quick because I smell that turkey. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -mm. So if you hear any stump grumbling, it's my stomach. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, the first one is we are followers of Jesus and we are soldiers of the cross. I remember a song, and most of you do, is who all remembers I am a Christian soldier? I'm a Christian soldier marching as to war with the cross of Jesus. And yada, yada, I don't even know the rest. But it was a good song. I remember that's what stuck to me. And that's why it's so important. Because the cross compels us to march forward for our Lord. Amen? Amen. And the cross also sets us free from our sins and death. No more. You know, we're, we have our sins. We have our sins. God says, you know, I paid it forward for you guys. I paid it all for you. We have eternity. And the cross also bids us to serve the cause of Christ. So we are soldiers of the cross. Amen. And I am honored today that I can talk to the vets and the, and the people that are here that went through and paid it forward with their, with, their, with their service. And you guys know who you are. You guys come back, you know, and sometimes you guys are pushed to the side. I think it's wrong. I think we need to step up and say, you know what? Thank you for your service. If you see somebody with a hat, with a, with a veteran's hat or anything, World War I, II or whatever, you know what? They went through some stuff. And even our, our, uh, our members here that are military, that are younger, they're going through some stuff too. Because we're hearing about it. We're hearing prayers about it. We need to lift them up, church. Amen. We do. We need to stand behind them and say, you know what? I feel your pain. I may not know what you're going through, but I'm going to pray that God will give you that deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you remember when the crowd taunted Jesus when he was hanging on the cross? They kept saying, you know what? Save yourself. Save yourself. We all know that scripture real well. But Jesus was committed to the cause. So shall we be committed to the cause. And the cause is without that cross, there would not be forgiveness of sin. There would only be death. We have eternity in mind. Because of the cross, because he stayed committed. He could have went down and he could have called the thousands of legions of angels to come out and wipe everybody out. But he did it for you and me. He did it for the men and women that are serving overseas. And I pray to God that when we look at the cross, it stands for something more. It stands for something more. He come to save us. He came to deliver us. And the cause that Jesus did was for our freedom of sin. So with the freedom as the vets today, you paid a price. You know, some of us made it back, some of us didn't. But you paid a price for our freedom. And Jesus also caused for our courage. He had courage to stand or sit the hand on the cross and say, you know what, I'm doing it for you and you and you because I love you. That's why he didn't give up. And either we should we as Christians. No matter what the enemy's throwing at you, we should not give up. People mock you and laugh at you, but that's nothing. How could anybody, and I so, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I couldn't hang on that cross for you guys. Honestly, truth be known, I couldn't. It took a special person without blemish to do it. We could say, oh man, I hang on that cross. You don't know what he went through. Honestly, you know what? I'm not afraid of anything. But that right there, that scares me. And we should look at the cross more than what it is. It is freedom. It is our liberty. And yes, we have. The vets paid for our liberty. But Jesus gave them that freedom. And he gave us the love. And I know the vets do it for the love of country. But he did it for the love of everyone. That's what Jesus paid. He paid the, he was the ultimate sacrifice. He had no blemish. 
He is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb that we sung. Worthy is the Lamb. Mm. Yes. And you guys, I tell you, man, thank God, because I see you guys are like tuned in. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to ask you a question. To what are you committed to? What cause would you risk? For what purpose would you dedicate your energy, your finances, or your time to? That's a, that's a difficult question. Even I had to ponder that. But we today honor our veterans. Honestly, but we honor, first and foremost, our Commander-in-Chief, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I, I'm, I'm not putting I'm not putting event bets, but you know what? Like I said earlier, you guys paid for our liberty. Thank you very much. But God paid it from the cross, man. He sent His Son. He said, "You know what? I'm going to give you my best." And I know you guys, whoever was in the battle or went out on the battlefields and see their brothers and sisters of arms that was dead next to them, they kept kept going on because you were fighting for that next person next to you. And as Christian soldiers of the cross, that's what we do too. We fight for the person next, next to you. We will never leave a man behind. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. So I salute the flag, but I kneel before the cross. Amen. And I hope you guys do too. Thank you, Jesus. And when you see a vet, you come up to him and you say, thank you. Hey, if you want to do something or buy him a meal or something, that's fine too. You don't have to beat your, beat your chest, but do something and appreciate them. We're seeing a bunch of stories coming out and that people are paying it forward and blessing those. Uh, there was I seen a story this morning or the other day. It was a World War One vet, and he was he was going and he's been. They paid it, uh, I guess, breakfast for him. He's got like three hundred dollars on his account, and they constantly love him. And 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 the lady waitress, he wants this particular waitress. She's a young lady, and he listens to her stories. And he sits there and touches. She goes up and she she goes, you know what? I don't have a grandpa, but she thinks he's a grandpa. She goes up and gives him a hug and says, I love you. And you know what? That means a lot to the vets. That means a lot. When you just wrap your arms around and say, you know what? I love you. I may not know you, and I, I didn't know. I wasn't in your shoes, but I love you. Because for my freedom. And that's what Christ is about. He gives us the freedom, amen? He gives us the freedom. Hallelujah. Well, with Jesus, he gives us the right things to do and put them at the right time. And I, and I thank God that, that we should never hesitate in the things that he allows us to do. And when he tells us to go, when our commander says, go, do this for me, or see this person and love on this person, we should do it. No hesitation, amen? Here's a story I want to share. It was Michael Molnar. He uh, was talking, he's telling a story about his son, uh, Keith. And he was deplored for service. And the commander of the Iowa National Guard spoke. And he said that his troops were well trained. The commander's priority was to bring all of his troops home safely. And, he, and if they would, if they were well trained. He could only be done if the soldiers would follow orders. Just like us, we have orders to follow as Christians. And he goes on and he says, and when the danger follows and we the first thing we try to take shortcuts uh, cuts in in our when battle comes in the heat of the battle we we take shortcuts and it's kind of like with us too as as living for christ we take sh uh, shortcuts we don't want to come to church we want to don't read the bible we don't want to pray and ask god what's on our mind and we wonder why god we feel like we're left on an island you know we have to do what we're trained to do and that's read the word of god that's why it's so important for us, church, to really to know what our battle plans are because it's written down here in the Bible. There's nothing I'm not telling you anything different. It's in the Bible. And when we pray, we got to pray and say, God, you know what? Whatever your will is in my life, I want that. You're my commander in chief. You're the Lord of Lords and you're King of Kings. Amen. So Keith goes on and speaks about when his truck was hit by a bomb. He said he immediately sprung into action. And if he wasn't trained to do what he had to do, he wouldn't know what to do. He would have started going on his own instincts. And that's kind of like what we do when the devil starts beating us, beating us up. 
We try to do it on our own. Instead of getting on our knees and say, Lord, help me. You know, he's going to go out there. And we see that in the Bible many a times, even with David and also Joshua. They, they basically had counsel with God. And they said, you know what, Lord, I can't do this without you. But I know you can when I have you come before me. You're going to go out before me. And God said, here's a sign. He did for David when he would go out for battle. He says, when the mulberry trees, uh, it's in, I uh, can't think of it, but it's when the mulberry trees start shaking, he goes, you go out there and go before and I'll take care of it. So David waited and waited until he had that sign from God. And God went out there before him and took care of the enemy. And Joshua as well. He told Joshua, you know what? You want to go ahead and, and, and take over the fortress? You got to march around seven times, seven times. Seven days and do it. Blow your horns. I'll give you victory. That's what it takes. That's what it takes for us, church, to have victory. Amen. And he said that uh, Keith went on and said, he said, if each step, if he wasn't trained properly, he said, uh, he, he said he wouldn't know what to do. He wouldn't know what to do. But the thing of it is, we know sometimes it's boring. Okay. You know. Where it, he said it was boring. Some of the stuff that they were going through. But what we have to understand is routine, routine, routine. God continues as long as we're in the Bible and in the word of God. It's routine. It starts to come up here. So it's instinct, right? It's not like we're going to be all freaked out when things happen. God says, you know what? I'll make a way. I'll make the way. Amen. Hallelujah. John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Let me ask you today, are you hearing, allowing God to speak to you? Are you allowing God to, to minister to you and you say, you know what, I know God. Are you pushing him to the side? Are you just sitting there letting it go by the wayside? Are you going through the motions? It's very important for us because to be honest with you, time is near. I feel it. I, and I know probably you've heard ministers say time is, because I was one of them. I used to say, you know what? Yeah, it's been happened 10 over years ago. But you know what? It's all lining up. You can feel it. You can see what our country is dealing with. You can see the turmoil over to, to Israel. You can see everything's mounting and the intensity is going on. And you know what? Some of us Christians are not praying. We sit with idle hands. We sit back and say, yeah, that's their problem. I'm in my own happy world. But you know what Christ says? You bless my people, I will bless you. That means we have to pray. We have to lift them up. We have to lift up our own leaders. I've said it before. Even if you didn't, if you voted for them or if you didn't, you still got to bless them and lift them up. It doesn't matter. You know, honestly, only opinion that matters is Jesus Christ and what he tells us to do. Ours doesn't. Our opinions usually get us in trouble, amen? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me to ask you something. I said, what is God is really interested in? God desires that all men and women come to know him as Lord and Savior. That's pinpoint number one. People that come to Jesus through the ministry of the church, we're not always have to, have, we have to have the responsibility. We have to be involved in some type of ministry. And it has to start even in our community, and it'll go out into the world. We also, and, I, and I'm thankful that we do su uh, support missionaries. It's very important. But you know what? Sometimes, some of us says, well, I support missionaries, but they neglect the community. They, hey, day by day, people you come to work with, well, I don't got time, I'm working. You know, God will always pick time for you to minister to people. He will give you the, the greatest opportunity. You don't have to grab your Bible, smack them upside the head. Some you might want to. Some might. <laughs> Praise God, man. Sometimes they step on that nerve wrong, you know. But, but the thing of it is, is God will always allow an opportunity if you allow to do his will. He wants us to be soldiers. He wants us to say, you know what? We have a purpose. We want to serve God first and foremost. We know who our commander in chief is. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give, give God a praise. Come on now. Hallelujah. 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 First Peter chapter 2, verse 21 says, For to this you were called. 
Because Christ suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. So the message that God has given is to share the message of salvation. That's the, that's the message, sharing salvation. And it helps us, church, when we do that. It helps us break free of a lot of the, the convictions and the things that's going on in our lives. You think about it. Because the more we share, the more stuff that people that God brings to us, it starts kind of help us dissolve and help us with our problems that we go through. Amen? It's going to cost us some. It may cost us financially. It may, it may cost us our life. But it all, you know, the thing of it is, in time, and people say, you know what, I don't have the time. But hang on for a minute. Hang on for a minute. When we say we don't have the time, or I'm loaded up too much, I've got so much on my plate, we got to look on. When he was hanging on the cross, did Christ say I didn't have enough time? He said, I did it for you because I love you. And that's what we're lacking in the churches today. Love. Love for one another. One of the greatest commandments. One of the greatest commandments to love one another. You know, he said, first of all, love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And then love thy neighbor. That means anybody that you're, you're, you come in contact to. Anybody that's on the street, we have to love them. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We got to risk it to get the biscuit. Because the biscuit is eternity. Amen? I can't remember who quoted that. But you know what? We, we, you seriously. Because when we risk it, it's all for nothing, man. It's not in vain. Because we got eternity, man. And if somebody wants to take your life for that, hey, you, you, don't, have to, you don't have to put up with anything down here. You're going to be with Christ, man. That's powerful. Man, I was looking at that. I was like, man, you know, Lord, hey, all right, man. Come. I know I want him to come. But if, if, if I'm risking all that I have for the kingdom and something happens to me, praise God, man. I'm going home. We all should be eager for that. But why we're still here, what do we got to do, church? All right. We got to work. We got to build that kingdom. We're soldiers of Jesus Christ. We are soldiers. We're not wimps. You know, I remember telling Kelly one time, I says, I don't know, man. I said, it would be hard for me. You know, when the Bible tells us, turn your cheek when somebody slaps you. They said, turn, turn, turn to the next man. That was hard for me. It was like, man, somebody hits me, I'm on them. I'm laying hands on hard, fast, and sudden. But you know, we got to, you know what? It's, but the thing of it is with that message right there, it's saying, you know what? If they do that to you, it's because they don't like you. They don't like who you really stand for. Jesus. Amen? Number three, when you truly serve as a soldier, the cost is all, often great. And we're looking in John 15, verse 13. It says, greater love has no one than this, than to lay one's life for the friends. And it's true. It's going to cost us. The devil's always going to be at us. He's always going to be trying to do everything to trip you up. He's here to destroy you guys. He's here to destroy us. He's destroy, trying to destroy the ministry. He's trying to disrupt you at, at work, piling on things that you think that, you know what? What's going on? How come? Because you know what? It's who you stand for. And I'm thankful for each and every one of you guys because you know what? You're standing for Christ. You're here today. You're not allowing the enemy to take and dictate how you should be as a Christian. And that's what's so important for us. You're willing to take the risk. You're willing to say, God, whatever it is you want me to do, I'm going to do it. You know, he's not going to, don't let him steal your hope and your joy and your love for Jesus Christ. Don't let him put in your head that it's not worth serving God. But I'm going to tell you, it is. But you remember when God, when, when the enemy is hammering you, hammering you, you tell him what's in store for him at the end times. Right. Amen. Because yeah. the Lord's going to kick him in his teeth and put him where he belongs. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. We have a responsibility, church, for even others. We have people in our churches all around and we always talk about the body of Christ. And you know, there are wounded Christians that we left. We left. We, we, we know they're wounded and we leave them alone. Shame on us. Shame on me. 
okay? Shame on me. Because what the, what the military is, is, some of their mottos is, no man left behind. And there's sometimes in churches, we says, hey, it's not our problem. Let them fix it. Sometimes God calls us to help out in times. Sometimes he says, I don't want no man. He don't want no man left behind. You think about it. He wants everybody to come home for the eternity. He's got a gift for each and every one. And that's salvation. You know, but we look at it as, you know what, it ain't my, it ain't my problem. We walk around kind of like what we learned about is, is the priest and the Levite and the good Samaritan. We need to have been more Samaritans than priest and a Levite instead of just walking by. When we see a wounded fellow, just like the vets, when you guys were out in combat, if somebody was wounded, what you would do is you would grab them and get them to safety. And that's what Jesus does for us. When we're wounded, he calls you and me to grab them and bring them to safety, to protect them. Amen. And I like it in verse 18 says, if the world hates you, you know that he hates me before he hates you. People of work know who you stand for. And we know that some, some uh, businesses, they says, you know what, you don't take it. They want to separate church and state. But you know what, God will always open up doors for you. And the people that says, you know what, I didn't like you. You know, I don't like you because they don't like you personally on the outside. They like who you stand for. Because I knew that when, when I got busted and I was facing prison time, and most of you've heard it, you know, people liked me for what I did, okay? They liked me for what they could get from me. But when Christ turned my life around, they didn't like that. They, and, and you guys are the same way. You guys have a testimony. It's like, you know what? They don't like what you become. They like the old you. They said, I like you better back in the day, you know. But you know what? I said, praise God, man. Because when they see the light of Jesus, that's conviction. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. I want people to have smiles on their face. Yeah. Hallelujah, man. Woo, doggy. Lord have mercy. Praise Military, when they're caught in a firefight. What do they do? They call out. They get on their radio. They radio ahead and say, you know what? I'm pinned down. So many Christians, we don't call out to Christ, our commander in chief. Because what he's going to do is he's going to go out there before you. And he's going to make it happen. He's going to take care of you. He's going to save you. He's going to get you out of your trouble. And, it's, you know, and that's what we have to do as Christians, as soldiers of the cross. We have to get on our knees at times. And read the word of God at times. And I know we look at it as, you know what? Because the more you learn, the more when you don't have your Bible with you, it's up here. That's what it takes. Repetitious. That's why the military is constantly telling these young men and young women and the vets, you know, Claude, you guys, you guys know. Because you have to go through the training. They call it basic training. But what they're trying to do is break you down in a way to get your focus right. It's not to beat you down like the enemy. And that's what Christ does. When you accept Jesus Christ, he refocuses what's important. The enemy don't like that. They like the old you. They like the old Kelly. They, they like the old Dan, Sister Joyce. You know? They like it when you guys were out partying, hanging and banging and doing whatever you wanted to do. He didn't like that. I didn't, pick, I, I, didn't, I didn't pick on some. I, I was looking. I almost said something. Erica. <laughs> Praise God. Y'all know who you are. But you know what? It's great to be a soldier for Christ. It is. We wear that badge proud. Amen. We wear, we wear our, we, and that's the thing. Jesus said to us, great love has no one than this to lay, his, uh, lay down his life for his friends. That's what he did on the cross. We're friends, we're heirs of Jesus Christ. We are soldiers of the cross, and it is costly. But I, I don't know about you, but it is worth it. Amen? It's worth it. You know what? Go ahead. Do what you must. But man, God's always in control. Amen? And the last one is 
Soldiers of the cross have orders to go. And this is, a, this is I, I love this statement. It's in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. It says, Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And, and verse 19 says, Go therefore, make disciples of all nations. And I want you to read this with me, okay? He says in 19, it says, Go therefore. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Go therefore. Come on, say it like you mean it. Make disciples of all nations. Keep it raining it. Amen. And then verse 20 says, Teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you and I. Okay, I'm just at will. All right. And he says, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. Amen. Come on, give him a clap on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what's that tell you? Devil don't have no authority. Because Jesus said himself, I have authority in heaven and here on earth. So he better tuck his tail and run. Amen. So let's get out our battle cry. Let's get on our knees and pray for the ones that's fallen away that they will come back to know Christ. That they, when we, they were hurted, we, we, God gives us that discernment that we can grab them and help them and lead them back to where they need to be. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Galatians 3.27 says, as for many of you who were baptized in Christ have put on Christ. That means we're clothed with Christ. We're clothed with the righteousness of God. That means, like I said earlier, we have a, we have a, a uniform. Mm -hmm. We have a uniform. Right. You know what? And it's, it's lit up so bright. People say, well, I don't, I don't need no uniform. No, it's lit up because the light of Jesus is shining through you guys. That's what they see. We're, we're actually walking on this or glowing. Glowing. Honestly. And we're going to have our new heavenly bodies, amen, when God calls us home. It's our identity. That's what's great about it. We have the identity that God is saying, you know what? They're mine. They're my, they're my, uh, they're your heirs. They're my children. I love each and every one of you. And it was worth hanging on that cross. Getting the spear in your side. Getting beat. It was worth it. We should look at that and save that mentality, the same mentality as Jesus Christ has. Amen. Amen. He says, Go. Share to the lost and dying. Give them freedom through Christ. That is our purpose of soldiers of the cross. American soldiers have gone throughout the world to serve the United States and often offer freedom and hope. We should do the same thing. That's exactly what our calling is for the cross, is to go throughout the community in the world and to offer freedom from sin and hope for the future. That's what we are, and that's our DNA. That's who we, in our model, and I, honestly what Paul says in chapter, uh, in 2 Timothy verse 4 and 7, he says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. And I pray that everybody here today that will do just that. But I want to put something else in our motto. And I, was, I, I said, Lord, why, why, why do you want this scripture? And the Lord says, this is what your motto is. And I picked out three things that stood out the most. That also talks about being a vet, being in service, and also a service for Christ. It says to fight, finish, and have faith. It goes right, same thing. I, it, it doesn't matter. We have to fight the enemy. We have to finish the race that God's called on us. And we have to live by faith, not by sight. Amen? That's what it's about. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And before I read, I, I, I pray, I want to, if you are present here today, I want all the vets that are present today to come forward. And I want to give, uh, the, the, the church wants to give something to you. Just a, a small token. Um, you know, thank you again for your service and everything that you guys done. You know, Claude's been around. 
Um, you know, he fought, what is that? Uh, you fought the Moabites and the Jebusites and... No, I'm sorry. Uh, that was a different flood. Hallelujah, man. Praise God. Yeah, the Moabites, the Jebusites, I play with love. No, I told him, hey, you know what? I think he's been around since Lansing was founded. Come on up here, Richard. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Come on up here. You just tell him, Richard. Pippin' ain't easy. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll take yours. I'll honor you. I'll take yours right to you. Come on up here and sit down. You can go ahead and sit down. Praise God. Was you next to Claude when you guys were fighting the Moabites and the Jeffrey sites? Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> praise God for that. There's that. <laughs> praise God. I like to have a little fun. You know, there's something. I did give April 1 already, so sorry. You got to give Claude. <laughs> praise God. No, April's came and helped out. Uh, my wife set up and stuff, and I tell you, and, and the act of service that she has, and you know, she's come a long way. You know, you know, April, she's shy, but I love her. She's crazy. She's crazy. Hey, we're all crazy for Christ, amen. We're gonna go down and have food, okay? But I want to first. I want us all to stand up. Richard, you can sit down. But I want you to stand up. I want you to reach your hand forward. Because we're going to pray for these vets right now. Our gracious, loving Father, we thank you, God, for bringing such valor to Lansing Calvary Assembly. We thank you for each and every one of their sacrifice. But the real sacrifice was when they kneeled to the cross for you, Heavenly Father. They chose you over the world. And Lord, I pray, God, that your blessing and hedge of protection today continues to go out before them. You make a way for them, Lord. Bless them, watch over them, and guide and direct them. And Lord, as we go downstairs today and have fellowship, God, I ask, Lord, that we put you first. We thank them for their service and love on them. But they don't just go beyond today. It goes beyond the next day and the next day when we see. Let's be service men and women for the cross. Put you first, Heavenly Father, because you thought about us first before we were ever thought of. We thank you, Jesus. We ask for your blessing today for each and every one that come out for their act of service. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said? Amen. 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 Hallelujah.